Ida for defending my husband after my ex-husband abandoned our children? I, 38F, have a 9-year-old son, Max, and a 6-year-old daughter, Olivia, with my ex-husband, Dan, 35M. Max is severely acoustic and requires a lot of care. I remarried three years ago, and my husband, Luke, is incredible. Dan has the kids for six hours every week. This week, it was on Tuesday, and as I was away for a funeral, Dan took the day off work to be with them in the morning and evening. He and his girlfriend, Sophie, picked them up as planned at 11 a.m. My husband took this time to play a round of golf with my brother. They finished the game at 4 p.m., and the golf course is 30 minutes from our house. I got a call at exactly 5 p.m. from Sophie, screaming at me about abandoning my kids. I was confused and eventually realized Luke wasn't home yet, so I told her where the spare key was, and they could wait for Luke to come home inside. Unfortunately, Luke's car stopped working on the motorway, and he was in a complete dead zone with no coverage. He was able to call emergency services, but nothing else would connect. When the police arrived, the first thing he did was ask if someone could contact Dan to tell him what happened. Sophie was already on the phone to the police, reporting me and my husband for child abandonment. They said one of us should have been there and that Dan doesn't feel safe inside our home. So, they left the kids inside our home, and the police needed to go and save our kids and arrest us. The police officer speaking to them told them multiple times to turn around and that they were the ones who had abandoned them. Throughout this time, I'm receiving messages from Dan saying how unfair this was on him and Sophie, and that I'm a terrible parent for leaving them with Luke. At this point, I didn't actually know what was going on, all I knew was that Luke wasn't home, but Dan had found the spare key. At no point did he tell me that they had left the kids alone. Luke got in touch with me via the police, and I arranged for a friend to go there as soon as she could, but the police already had a unit there after the call with Sophie. After this, I decided to try and get his six hours a week taken away. I've given him so much leeway over the years, and this was my limit. Our son is dependent on an adult, and our daughter is six, and the only thing he would say to defend himself is, well, I kept up my side of the agreement by bringing them back after six hours. This has caused a completely baffling situation, to the point where Sophie sent me messages that the police are now investigating. Dan hinted that he is going to try and get the kids taken into child services because of my husband abandoning them. I had multiple people ask me why I'm staying with someone who abandoned my children. His parents have threatened to try and gain custody of the children, saying the children need a stable family unit and calling my husband abusive. So then I put the whole story, with evidence, on my private Facebook page, and people quickly understood. But now I'm being branded a drama queen for publicly blasting the father of my children, putting my husband above my kids. I don't understand how, he's more of a father to them than Dan is. I feel like I've taken crazy pills. Update 1. For some context before the update, my brother, Pete, was friends with my ex-husband before we ever got together. He also never really got involved in our relationship, or separation. He's never really been involved in my life beyond being a good uncle. He's a nice guy, but we have never been that close, he's always been closer to my ex, and now with my husband. When he found out what happened, that completely changed and he put himself right in the middle of it all. My brother was always passive in his friendship with Dan, I always suspected he was scared of him. But not anymore, he called Dan and told him to meet him at Dan's parents, who he knows quite well. Dan was advised that bringing Sophie to this meeting wouldn't end well for him. I don't know exactly what was said, but the result of their conversation is that Dan's parents are going no contact with him. I don't like them, they've never liked me, but I've never doubted they loved my kids, and would protect them with their lives. Pete did tell me that Dan made it clear he wouldn't break up with Sophie under any circumstances, even if it meant he wouldn't be able to see his kids. Pete explained what happened to my ex's in-laws, that the version of events I posted was true, and went through the evidence. Dan argued and complained until his dad told him to leave. I think the fact that my brother, who was known for caring about booze, women, and sports and nothing else, took this so seriously got the grandparents to wake up. I spoke to them, and although their apology was barely worth hearing, we came to an understanding. I'm not going to allow any visits between Dan slash Sophie and my children going forward. Our agreement was informal, no court orders or anything. If he wants to see them, he will have to fight for it, which I know he won't. Those six hours a week are now going to be with his parents, on the condition that if they allow Dan to be around the kids, even once, they will be cut off from our lives. They were fine with this. Today came, and they picked the kids up and spent the day with them. They called me after 5 hours and asked if they could bring them back an hour later than planned. They were having a lot of fun painting, and the kids wanted to finish what they were doing. No problem, thanks for checking. I cannot stress enough how much I dislike them, but knowing my kids are with people who want to be with them is such a good feeling. Dan didn't even text me to ask if he was going to have his scheduled time today. I spoke to a police officer yesterday about the messages sent to me by Sophie. I'm going to gloss over some details for reasons, but they are moving forward with an investigation. There's a continued pattern of behavior, and it has been escalating. She's made some very specific threats, and over the weekend, she sent me a message that contained information she would only know if she had followed me to where I was at the time. Luke has set up external cameras on our house, including making sure our cars are covered by cameras at all times. 
Our neighbors know what happened last week, so they're going to keep a lookout for her as well. I feel awful that I let this person be around my kids for almost a year. I let her be around them but didn't know her well enough to spot that she was capable of behavior like this. I spoke to Olivia to ask what she thought of Sophie, and she said she was grumpy and not fun, but nothing to indicate she hurt them or anything. This reaction to the whole situation is just unhinged. Luke has been a star through this. He's made sure the kids know he loves spending time with them. Olivia calls him daddy anyway, but she knew she was abandoned last week and he's shown her that he's here for her. He's always loved Max and been amazing with him, but I know he's found it difficult to connect. He asked for advice, and I told him just to try things he enjoys and see if Max engages. Well, Max spent five hours on Sunday with a golf putter in his hand, hitting a ball to the putting machine thing Luke has in the garage, and apparently, he's a natural. So, I'm now reevaluating my life. Living with one golf obsessive was barely manageable, two maybe more than I can endure. Update 2. Since my previous posts, everything has mostly been resolved. I didn't go into detail at the time, but a lot of what Sophie was sending me was accusing me of infidelity, and she had told a lot of people that I was someone who slept with other women's men. I thought she was accusing me of cheating on my ex with my now husband, but we will come back to this in a bit. She directed people to message me from public posts on her Facebook, and one person turned up at my door to shout abuse at me. Between this and other stuff she did, I reported her to the police, and they opened a case of harassment. I spoke to an officer who took all the evidence I had, and a week later she was arrested and interviewed. Her phone and computer were seized, and she was released with bail conditions not to contact me directly or indirectly. I was told there was enough evidence to support a prosecution, but at that stage, I just wanted to move on and be done with it. Dragging it through court for God knows how long seemed such a daunting and horrible future, so the police didn't move forward with prosecution and filed it with no further action, meaning the bail conditions would no longer apply the moment it was filed. I was told this would happen after a review from somebody who wasn't the officer dealing with it, which would be between 1-7 to seven days, and I would be told when that was completed. This was communicated to her, and being the bright spark that she is, she immediately messaged my brother something along the lines of his sister being a female dog and a waste of police time. The bail conditions were still in place. He reported this to the police, not knowing I wasn't going forward with the whole case. Turns out that where I live, the breach of bail conditions is a crime against the government, not the person they were in place to protect. I have no knowledge of what's going on with that, but I am led to believe she is in a bit of legal trouble. After she was interviewed, I was informed of what was said about all of this to the police, bringing everything full circle to the original incident that led to all this. Turns out Sophie and my ex were in a relationship for almost two years while we were still married, with it ending around the time my six-year-old daughter was born, and then they reconnected in the last year or so. I had no clue this happened, I'm actually weirdly impressed he hid it so well. Sophie was under the impression we split up a year into their relationship, and didn't know we had a son while they were together. When they reconnected, he told her we had two kids, which she wasn't happy about but forgave him. The thing is, my ex told her that my daughter is eight, but she's only six. He was covering up lying to her all those years ago about separating from me. I guess this was easier than telling her that not only were we together for the second year of their relationship, but we had a child in that time frame. I don't know what his long-term plan for this lie was. The day it all exploded, Olivia corrected her about her age, and she realized that I was still having intimacy with Dan while they were together all those years ago. She thinks the moment he told her we had split up, she went from being the side piece to the legitimate partner. I'll go to my grave not understanding that logic. Anyway, she hit the roof and refused to be around his loved child anymore, which led to the whole issue at my house in the first post. Luckily, she didn't say any of this in front of Olivia. Dan is still with her. They can have each other. He's made it clear he has no interest in seeing either his legitimate child or his love child, which is fine. His parents have been incredible this entire time, helping with childcare to the point I have been able to pick up more hours at work. We've gotten along much better since they've accepted that maybe all the bad things they heard about me weren't true. Still some bad relations there, but it's a much improved relationship, which is great for the kids because they love spending time with them both.